All right, let's get started. This is going to be a video uh, with just a few examples that go into some concepts that I think the UMKC videos don't cover in quite enough depth, uh, which is how are uh, functions with fractions in them, uh, how do they change, uh, and how does that give them asymptotes? Because uh, imp there's important concepts in here that have to do with limits. Limits are what uh, 1.7, 1.8, and section 1.9 are about. Uh, and actually, limits are what the rest of calculus is about uh, because the derivative is based on a limit and integrals are based on limits too. So, uh, so let's get started with this problem. Uh, so we want to graph uh, this function. It's a function where there's the x is in the denominator of a fraction. We're going to see how that changes things. Uh, and then explain why it has its asymptotes, why are the asymptotes where it is, or where they are, and also describe the asymptotes with limit notation. So first of all, to graph it, I'm just going to go to desmos.com. It is always good to uh, graph things by hand if you can, but uh, we're going to save some time this time. So the function was f of x equals uh, 3 plus 1 over x minus 2, right? Yes. Okay, so there is our graph. Um, I'm just going to copy it. Let's see what it looks like. Take it back to the notes. Okay, so, oh, it changed color. It was blue before, now it's red. Oh well. Uh, okay, so this is what it looks like. So you know what its asymptotes are. Let's draw on where the asymptotes are here. We can see there, uh, as you go to the left, it gets closer and closer to this horizontal line right here, which is the line where all the y coordinates are 3, so this is the line y equals 3 is the horizontal asymptote, and the vertical asymptote here is x equals 2, because that's a horizontal, uh, sorry, a vertical line. So all of these points here have the same x coordinate, so it's x equals 2. Um, okay, so now what is it about the equation? that tells you it will have those asymptotes. That's what I want to explore a little bit. Um, and I think it helps to see things in a table. So uh, one way to make a table of any function you want is to use Microsoft Excel. Um, so here's Microsoft Excel. Uh, in the top here, this, this one is just the column name. These are all different values of x. These are going to be values of x minus 2, and then we're going to see what happens to 1 over x minus 2, and then what happens when you add 3 to that. Um, so I chose these values of x over here uh, for a reason. Um, let's see what happens here um, when we plug them into uh, x minus 2. So I'm going to just hit equals to go into formula mode, uh, a2 minus 2 there will now make this this cell become negative 1000 minus 2 uh, because a2 oh you can't see it but a is at the top there um, so negative 1000 minus 2 is negative 1002 um, you know what 2 minus 2 is going to be 0 that's important here um, and then here what we're going to do is 1 divided by uh, equals to be formula, uh, 1 divided by the quantity a2 minus 2. Um, and that's going to take that. So we see what happens here. Okay, let's look at these values at this point. So I, I 
the, the, the formula is 3 plus 1 over x minus 2. So I chose these values of x that are, some of them are really close to 2 here. Some are a little bit less than 2 and some are a little bit bigger. I wanted to do that to emphasize the fact that these things that are close to 0 make, sorry, close to 2, make this next column x minus 2. These values are now close to 0. And what happens to the values of 1 over x minus 2? Um, they become 1 divided by a small number. Uh, and what is 1 divided by a small number? That becomes really big. Uh, so that's an important concept. I wonder if I can write here. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Um, well, all right. You heard me say it. 1 divided by a uh, small number gives you a big result. So like 1 divided by negative 0 0.001 gives you negative 1,000. 1 divided by positive 0 0.001 gives you positive 1,000. And 1 divided by 0 is undefined, which is why you get this error here. Um, okay, so, and also notice what happens when x is a really uh, big number, like far away from 0, like a big negative number or a big positive number here. Um, then that minus 2 is still really far away from 0. And 1 divided by a very big number becomes very small. So like one divided by a thousand is a really small decimal. Um, so that's an important thing to keep in mind about fractions. Uh, and then what happens if you take this column is gonna be all of these results uh, with three added to them is the only difference. So I'm just gonna say this is equal to column C2, which is right here, uh, plus three. And we'll see what happens here. Um, so a number that was close to zero, remember when x was like negative 1,000, that makes the fraction 1 over x minus 2 close to zero. And then 3 plus that gives you something close to 3. Um, 3 plus this other number gives you something so close to 3. Um, 3 plus a really big negative number gives you, or still a really big negative number. Um, and so, I wanted to use this to explain what's going on with this graph here. So whenever you're plugging in numbers that are like over here, this, this part of the number line here, not actually including two itself, that's when um, x minus two is close to zero here. Um, and that is going to make the y coordinates very large. Um, so that makes, one over x minus two really big numbers like a thousand so if you plug in like 2.001 here the y becomes like a thousand um okay so that explains why functions end up getting uh vertical asymptotes it usually happens when there is a denominator that's equal to zero there all right so why does it have a horizontal asymptote well the reason is as you get out here um if you take values of x that are very large, like six, seven, eight, nine, a thousand, um, whoops, that makes the values of one over x minus two get very small, very close to zero. Um, so that makes approximately zero. Um, and that also makes three plus one over x minus two uh, approximately equal to three plus zero, which is three. Uh, and this is the kind of analysis you have to do a lot in calculus. Uh, and yeah, you can see the same things happening out here. If you have big negative numbers, um, where it's weird to say that x is large when it's negative. So we can say there's a large absolute value of x out here when x is like negative five or negative a thousand um that makes that still makes one over x minus two approximately zero and that's why the y coordinates out here get closer and closer to three um, All right, so that's kind of the reasoning about why the three and the, the minus two affect the function, the, the graph, the way it does. Um, 
let's talk a little bit about uh, about how to describe this with limit notation and what limit notation means. Okay, so first, um, the horizontal asymptote is what we're talking about when we go further out way to the right or way to the left with large values of x. Um, So it's the, the equation of it is y equals 3. That's the equation of that line. Um, but how do we describe that with limits? Well, what we mean by this is, let's talk about going to the right first. Um, it basically means that as x approaches infinity, meaning we go further and further to the right out this way, um, that's x approaching infinity, uh, the value of the function f of x gets closer and closer to the number 3. So it's not exactly equal to 3 ever. It's never exactly equal to 3. But the, the bigger numbers that you plug in, we can see in the table here, if you plug in a number like x is 10, it's really close to 3. Or if x is 1,000, it gets really, really close to 3 here. Um, so that's what this arrow means, is the values of f of x get closer to 3. Uh, so the way to write that with limit notation is... We say the limit uh, as x approaches infinity, we always describe what is happening to the x coordinates here, of the value of the function f of x, which is equal to 3 plus 1 over x minus 2. This limit is, the, this whole thing here stands for the thing that f of x gets closer to as x gets closer to infinity. That's what this limit notation means. So as x gets closer to infinity, f of x is getting closer to 3. So we say the limit equals 3. Um, we can also talk about what happens as x approaches negative infinity, which is on the other side. The further you go out to the left here, that is values of x approaching negative infinity. So we could also say as x approaches negative infinity, uh, meaning as you go further to the left, f of x approaches 3. So we can write that with limit notation and say the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x is equal to 3 as well. Um, so that's the horizontal asymptote. Now, what about this vertical asymptote? Um, yeah, so this is when x is close to 2, what is happening to the y coordinates? Well, there's two different things happening. Um, we could talk about x getting closer to 2 from the left, which means, you know, I'll erase this a little bit. So as x gets closer to 2 from the left, meaning you plug in numbers like uh, 1, 1.5, 1 1.9, 1 1.99. What is happening to the values of f of x? The, the, the y coordinates here are all becoming bigger and bigger negative numbers. Um, so we can say about that that... Uh, as x approaches 2 from the left, um, what is happening to f of x? f of x is the y-coordinates of these points, and they become uh, bigger and bigger negative numbers. So we say f of x approaches negative infinity. Um, and the way you write this with limit notation is like so. You say the limit as x approaches 2, with a little minus here, uh, of f of x. So that's talking about this side. 
x approaches to from the negative side. So that's where you get that little minus from. Um, well, what's happening to the y coordinates down here? The y coordinates are approaching negative infinity. So we say that this is this limit, the, the result of it is negative infinity. Um, so that's what's happening there. And then uh, for on the other side, for other values of x here, like 3 or 2.1 or 2.01, here we're talking about x approaching to from the positive side. So use a little plus for that. Well, the y coordinates here are up here now. And those y coordinates are getting bigger and bigger. And we talked about that because the denominator of the fraction is getting closer and closer to zero. So the whole thing gets closer to infinity. Um, and this time it's positive infinity. So we can say as x approaches 2 from the right, f of x approaches infinity. Uh, and the way to write that with limit notation is you say the limit as x approaches 2 with a plus. So that's what the input is doing. It's getting closer to 2. What happens to f of x? f of x gets closer to positive infinity. So we say the limit of f of x as x approaches 2 is positive infinity, like so. OK, so that's uh, one quick example of limit notation. Um, it's, it's good to think about things with this kind of approach to break down the different parts of an equation and think about what values they're going to have. Like, what's going to happen to the x minus 2 when x is either really big or really small or really close to 2? What is, what is that going to do? And then what's going to happen when you do 1 divided by that? And then what happens when you do 3 plus those things? Um, breaking down the way functions behave in this kind of way is a, it's a really handy tool that will help you understand a lot of stuff in calculus. So I um, wanted to do an example of that. Um, OK, so let's look at another example. This is looking at uh, the relationship between a graph and limits the other way now. Now we have the results of the limits, and we want to draw the graph that has them. Um, so first of all, this is also to help us read function notation in general. So when we say that f of 1 equals f of 3 equals 0, um, that really means that we have these x inputs and uh, so that means x is 1, x is 3 here, and the 0 is y. So it gives us um, two points that we know about. When the input is 1, the output will be 0. And also, when the input is 3, the output will be 0. So that's just telling us about two points on this graph. Um, I'm going to get a grid really quick from desmos.com. Okay. There's a grid. Um, so we have the point 1, 0. That should be right about here. That means f of 1 is equal to 0. And we have the point 3, 0. f of 3 is equal to 0. Uh, and let's see what else we know. We know that what this is saying, what part b is saying, is that as x approaches negative infinity, so that means as we go to the left, like you take numbers like negative 2, negative 4, negative 1,000, numbers out there, what happens is that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x gets closer to 0. 
Um, okay, so you, we know that much. Um, and what else can we say? That as x gets closer to positive infinity, that's what c is. I'm just going to translate that here. This is saying as x approaches infinity, meaning plugging in numbers like 4, 6, 10, things way out there. Uh-oh. Things way out here. Positive infinity is off in this direction somewhere for values of x. Um, f of x is getting closer to negative 2. And I just noticed a mistake here. This should say f of x approaches, meaning it gets closer to 0. Maybe it's equal to 0, maybe not. But I had an equals there before, and that was wrong. OK. Um, and we also know that just to translate this one, which should be part d, Part D is saying that as x approaches 2, f of x approaches infinity. Okay, so let's draw these different things. Um, well, as x approaches 2, maybe I'll draw that one first. Um, that means if you plug in inputs like uh, 1.5 or 1.9, or if you plug in things like 2.1 or 2.001, things like that, the, the y coordinates are going to get really big. They're, so that means the y coordinates will go up. So y approaches positive infinity means this direction. That's what's happening up there. So um, that means this is going to be a vertical asymptote. And it's probably going to look like this. Okay, so that's that vertical asymptote that we described here. Um, and then, uh, how is it going to happen that as x approaches negative infinity, f of x gets closer to 0? Well, uh, the line y equals 0 is, of course, the x-axis. So this is saying that the further out to the left we go, the closer the y-coordinates get to 0, like so. Um, and the same thing is going to happen to the right uh, as x approaches positive infinity. The y coordinates are going to get closer to where y is equal to negative 2, which is this line. So that's going to look like something like that, flattening out over there. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so these two, the uh, parts B and C here, that those are describing uh, horizontal asymptotes. And this one is describing a vertical asymptote. Okay, so that was a quick example about that. All right, here we are again. Um, you might not have noticed this if I didn't tell you, but I messed up that recording the first time on this problem, so I'm re-recording it again. So here I am in the future to try number two. Uh, so first of all, let's answer question A. Uh, find the limit of g of x as x approaches negative infinity and as x approaches positive infinity. So again, we want to think about um, as x approaches negative infinity, meaning really big numbers for x, um, then what will happen to x squared plus 4? I'm going to break this down into bits. Uh, look at the individual parts of a rational function to help understand it. So as x squared, sorry, as x gets big, x squared, well, x squared is going to be a big positive number. So like if you do negative 100 squared, you'll get positive 10,000, for example. And then x squared plus 4, that's going to be a big positive number plus 4. That's going to approach infinity. Um, it's becoming really big positive numbers. Uh, and then as x squared plus 4, what happens to 12 divided by something getting bigger and bigger? Well, 12 divided by a very large number is going to get closer and closer to zero. Um,
And by the way, it's going to do this from the positive side. There, we're going to uh, we're always going to have twelve positive twelve divided by a very large positive number, and a positive number divided by a positive number is always positive. So it's getting closer to zero, but only being equal to positive numbers. So you can write it like that if you want. Um, so in limit notation, this is the limit as x approaches negative infinity of g of x is equal to zero you can say and we also let's think about the what happens as x approaches positive infinity first so as x approaches infinity uh let's see what happens uh x squared plus four so, meaning as x is a bigger and bigger number, x squared plus 4, that's going to be a really big number squared, plus 4 is still really big. So that's going to be approaching infinity too. And that means that 12 divided by x squared plus 4, that's 12 divided by something that's becoming larger and larger, is going to approach 0. Uh, and also from the positive side this time. So we'll write that as the limit of uh, of g of x as x approaches infinity is equal to zero so this means it's going to have a, a horizontal asymptote at zero in both directions the further you go out to the left as x approaches negative infinity or positive infinity or to the right um, the y coordinates the g of x gets closer to zero Okay, so we'll graph that in a second. Uh, for B, let's think about the minimum value of x squared plus 4. Uh, so same idea. I just want to break down x squared plus 4 into like a, a simpler function that you know a lot about, like basically x squared. What do you know about x squared? What is its minimum value? Well, any number squared is either a positive result if you square a negative number or square a positive number x squared is a positive result so it's greater than zero or if x is equal to zero then zero squared is equal to zero so this is greater than or equal to zero um, then what happens if you add four to that if x squared is always greater or equal to zero then x squared plus four is going to be greater or equal to four uh, and what does that tell you about the graph of g of x? Uh, well, it means that the output, let's think, the output g of x is always going to be 12 divided by something that's at least 4. And if you plug in x equals 0, that's the way to get this equal to 4. So that will make this become 12 over 3. I'm sorry, 12 over 4, which is 3. Um, so that's, gonna, that's what's going to happen if you plug in x equals 0. You got g of 0 equals 12 over 0 plus 4, which is 3. Um, but what if you plug in something that's not 0? If you plug in I don't, uh, something like 1 or 2 or negative 5 or whatever, the denominator is going to be bigger. And if the denominator is bigger, then the result is going to be less than 3. Because uh, whenever a, the bottom of a fraction gets bigger, the result gets smaller. Uh, so that means this is always going to be less than or equal to 3. So that's what we have here. Uh, let's draw a quick graph of it, and I can check our work. Uh, when you plug in x equals 0, you get 3, so it should have that point. And then as x approaches negative infinity, so as we go out that way, the y coordinates get closer and closer to 0. So that's going to look, I don't know, something like this. And they're always positive y coordinates, so above the x axis. Uh, and as you approach um, positive infinity, you go further out to the right, out this way. The y coordinates here should also get closer and closer to zero, like so. Um, 
And I know that the whole graph is going to look like this. I know it's never going to come back up or anything because it's always the y coordinates, the output is always less than or equal to three. So the whole, the graph of the function must always sit below this line y equals three. And it just gets up to that point at the peak right there. Let's check that that's what it's supposed to look like. If you go over to Desmos here and type it in, g of x equals 12 over x squared plus four, it looks like we got the graph right. So we're gonna stop it here. Tell me what you think about the video. If you have any tips or suggestions, thanks. Bye.